Good morning. Welcome back. I always think these tractors look funny when they're naked. Whenever they don't have their front end loader on them. <laughs> this is part two, getting winter ready. This is where I'm trying to go through any of the implements or attachments that I'm primarily going to use in the winter, including my tractor, and make sure before we start to get into the really negative temperatures that everything's working and greased and ready to go. In this part two, we're going to hook up the snowblower Give her a little test run, make sure everything's operating. I already removed the loader. I do want to stress, I know I've said it a couple of times before, if you're a new tractor owner, make sure you level the ground. In my case here, I took an old piece of plywood. You can see here that I dropped down so that the legs don't sink into the gravel. And I can tell you it came off as easy as butter and it'll go right back on the same way in the spring. I've read through the manuals. I believe I have all the parts necessary. Got my 64 inch blower. I have my new K-Connect driveline as well as the four-point hitch. Got my PTO shaft that runs from the mid-PTO and the subframe's already been bolted to the tractor by the dealer. The subframe components which were installed by the dealer is the big metal plate here on the front that you see and it has these hitches so to speak on both sides and also this piece or this mounting bracket so to speak that's here that sits just in front of the loader support. The subframe kit also comes with a heat shield, one on the left side of the tractor and one here on the right. I assume this is to shield these hydraulic hoses from I guess any of the heat from the exhaust. I have all the tools that I think I'm going to need today including grease and lubricant and being that my garage is here outside I have a tarp for laying on the gravel so I can get underneath to connect that drive line. I also wanted to go over a couple of comments that I received on my first part one putting this hydraulic angle kit on my rear blade. I really appreciate the suggestions and the time that a lot of folks take to offer out advice and suggestions, especially for someone like myself who's still got a lot to learn. Generally, normally when I get advice or I get some great suggestions from you folks, I'll have, you know, 40, 50, 60 comments that generally say the same suggested advice. And it works out great because that gives me a reasonable level of confidence that it might be an idea or a thing that I need to do or I should try. On this part one though, had some interesting feedback and I wanted to go over it while we're working on the snowblower today. You folks will know in that video, I added these hoses, of course, in the hydraulic angle kit. And I used, I guess, a Teflon white tape on the threads on these fittings. And I had a number of different responses, which all seemed to make a lot of sense to me as they were explained. I had some folks saying, no problem to use the white tape. I had other folks saying, you need to use a yellow or a blue tape, it's a higher quality. And I had a lot of people saying, don't use tape at all, it's bad. And that these fittings somehow will seal themselves and you don't need to put any type of a thread seal or a tape on them, which I thought was kind of interesting. However, I was all set to take that advice and figured, okay, I don't need to put Teflon tape on it. But I just got this brand new snowblower straight from the factory. And these elbow fittings or these 90 degree fittings came this way. And as you can see, they have white tape on them. And similarly, you can see that on these fittings, they have white Teflon tape. <laughs> so I'm kind of confused. So I think what I will do is one, thank you so kindly for all the advice and the different suggestions or opinions. I'm gonna drop by the Kubota dealer because I have to pick up some parts. Talk to Jim there. He's been the mechanic there for about 26, 27 years and I'll see what he recommends and, and I'll kind of follow him through from there. There are also grease circs on either sides of this auger but they've already been greased, I can see. And a couple other small points here. The chain, they say you should only put grease on it when you're storing it for the summer or the winter or long periods of time. But under regular operation, they said just to keep making sure you put chain lube or some form of a lubricant or an oil on the chain. Also requires lubricant on each of these pivot points for the chute. An important suggestion I have for you that I've learned over the last three years with the old snowblower this has a very similar chute design to it. There's a gear in there and there's teeth around the bottom of this. Strongly recommended you don't put grease in here because the grease of course freezes or gets very, very thick and gummy in the winter time. So what I found works for me, or at least for me, is I just keep lubricating it with some of this chain lubricant. And every time I've used it or every second time, I'll go in and I'll spray it again. And I find that it works much better in the really cold temperatures. This big pin, slides in through the back part of the subframe. I remember from last year, you're supposed to use this lithium grease on it, not regular grease or regular chain loop. 
So first and foremost, I just want to explain the parts to you good folks. This new K-Connect four-way hitch design is somewhat similar to the old blower, but it looks like it's much more improved, or at least I'd like to think so. Similar to the old blower, it has a sub frame that connects to the frame of the tractor. I'm not sure why yet, but your drive line, so to speak, which is basically this little hitch or this connection on the front that runs through a PTO shaft and comes back here to this thick shaft, which then attaches to the long shaft. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very mechanical. They all connect together kind of like a drive line to the front, which will drive the blower. They call that the K-Connect, but this frame or this frame-like component here, this is what they call their four-way connect. And I'm assuming it's called that because these two ends here connect into hinges and these two also connect to a component on the subframe. Four points. All right, checked it all out. I think we're all greased, lubricated, and ready to go. I've already pulled this rear pin. So the only other thing to do here is to pull the front pin. All right, let's throw it on the machine. Okay, that was way too easy. <laughs> oh man, that was great. The hinges just kind of hook up on these pins really easy. The manual said that these hydraulic hoses are supposed to pass, I believe, underneath this bar on the frame. We've got our pin. This should come up to meet it. And it does, great. Nice. Hopefully you can also see, nice improvement on this model. The angle on this pin actually has a detent in the metal so that it locks it in from moving around, unlike the last one. Put our little pin in here. That's it on the back. An addition which wasn't on the old one is another steel bar, which I think locks the front end behind those little hitches, and this pushes in from this side. Similarly, we put this pin in on this side, and she's locked. When you're putting in this big old drive shaft here, for lack of a better word, you always want to put the front end first because it has a very long spline on it, which allows it to very easily slide back and forth so that you can easily meet the mid PTO and connect it. There it is. Listen for the snap. I think I was right about the hydraulic hoses from the manual. It was hard to read, but it looks like they do actually come through the back of this frame. It looks like there's a little handle here, a hook, to kind of put your hoses up to keep them off the ground. Nice. That rain's coming in fast. We better get a move on. Before attempting to connect your snowblower, this big lever on the top, you're supposed to push all the way back. I believe by pulling it forward, it somehow secures this K-Connect into the I guess it's the female end of the blower. Before you get ready to approach your snow blower, you wanna hook up your first two hydraulic hoses cause that'll give you up and down. And you're probably gonna need those to align into the back of that hitch. It's the top, which is your white and your yellow. That are the hoses that do your up and down. If not, I'll just reverse them or change them. Let's check it out. I'm gonna to attempt to put this blower on or connect it while it's on the pallet. I'm not sure if being another four or five inches off the ground is gonna affect the angle of the connection to that uh, K-Connect, but we're gonna try it first. If it doesn't work, I'll shimmy it off onto the ground. Hopefully you folks can see the angle of this blower. I have it sitting angled backwards, and that's what it calls for in the manual. You're supposed to adjust this leg or this stand here to make sure that it does come on an angle. And I believe it's because they want the K-Connect to attach on an angle. Pretty sure. Snow blower angled back, and we pull these two pins, and they have a little locking mechanism there. Pull and turn the lock, and I think we're ready to connect.
That was super easy. I actually didn't know what to expect, which is why I was inching and I was trying to catch it, but it catches great, couples in really nice. The only challenge I had is this big pin on the other side went in immediately. This guy here, I had to shake it to get it to get into its hole. So I think what I'll do is I'll try to put some grease into those holes, maybe to lubricate a bit. My legs up. I certainly understand now why it's important to tilt it backwards because you probably saw it the first. Once I got my pins coming up underneath, as soon as I started to lift, of course it tilts the blower forward and then the pins come out of alignment. So it's important to keep that angle backwards as they suggested, but not bad at all. Let's hook it up and let's see if it'll spin for us. Once again, this is why I try stuff before winter. They gave me the wrong size couplers. They don't fit the third function valve females. Glad I figured that out now. Either way, I've got the rest of the hoses hooked up. Not quite sure how I'm gonna route these hoses. I wanna to talk to the mechanic. The pictures in the manual aren't that great, but it appears that these hoses should root down and get tie wrapped or wrapped into these existing hoses that go underneath by the subframe and come back out here with the other hoses that are already coming off of the hydraulics on the hitch. I'm assuming it worked because I saw leaves going out. That is one smooth blower. A lot less shaky than the old one was on the B2601. And I guess because of the cab, she's a lot quieter too. Nice. Last thing I've got left to do, at the beginning of every season, because I've got this gravel driveway, I need to make sure that the ground gets into a really good freeze before I take this blower all the way down to the ground. Otherwise I end up chewing up gravel. So all I've got to do is undo the bolts and the nuts and raise up these skid shoes, probably to the second or the top position, just so I've got an inch or two of clearance. Once the ground's frozen, probably mid to late December, I can come back out, lift the shoes so I can drop the blower flush to the ground. Glad I did it early as always. Gonna get some new couplers for the discharge chute. Need a couple of elbows for the rear blade, the hydraulic angling kit. And I'm gonna mark these hoses so I remember the order that they go in, so I don't have to play with them next time. Lift the skid shoes. And I'm good to go. Hope you enjoyed the video today. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful and safe week with your families. Please be kind to one another. I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers. I also wanted to thank one of our subscribers who put a similar angle kit on their rear blade and gave me a little bit of advice to replace these or at least to add a 90 degree elbow or a 90 degree turn on these couplers. He has a quick hitch similar to myself and you're absolutely right. The distance between the quick hitch and the remotes kind of crimp these wires or they kind of get butt ended into the quick hitch. So I think I'll pick up a few 90 degrees, refit these so that it reroutes the hose below the opening of the quick hitch. Thanks so much.